y'all have a ton of news flying at us every day, and so it'd be understandable if you missed a pretty important report that came out recently. Apple and Google have recently announced that their mobile devices will soon support something called digital contact tracing, and that they're rolling out this new capability in direct response to the ongoing COVID-19 crisis. Now, this announcement has provoked a lot of questions and a lot of concerns about privacy and about security. And we at Heritage uh, take those issues very seriously and are diving into this announcement and its implications. And we're making this quick video just to give you some of the facts so that you can have an understanding as to what is really going to be going on and uh, how you can choose to participate or more importantly, choose not to participate if that is what you desire. So let me give you a little bit of background on what contact tracing is to begin with. Manual contact tracing has been a part of every successful pandemic response for decades. Essentially, when someone gets sick, they're interviewed by a healthcare professional and they're asked about who they've been in contact with while they have been um, able to spread the disease. Those people are then contacted and uh, often tested and, and asked about who they've been in contact with and, and so far and so on. It kind of spreads until we get a good understanding of, of where the virus has been and also where the virus is going. Um, this is an essential tool in pandemic response, and it has been identified by public health officials and the Trump administration as being a key component of how we're going to uh, get the country open again and successfully manage the COVID-19 challenge. So we're not really debating whether or not we're going to do contact tracing. We're doing that. What we're debating, what needs to be further investigated, is how can technology be leveraged in a way that allows us to do contact tracing better at a larger scale, more efficiently, and in a way that maintains and possibly even enhances our individual privacy. And that's where the Google and Apple effort come in. What they're doing is they are building and deploying something called an application programming interface or an API. And what an API is, it's a, it's a batch of code that gives tools and rules to application developers, app developers, who are going to be building the um, contact tracing apps and then deploying them on Apple and Google phones. Now, what's really important about this API is that, as I said, it sets certain rules. And so it highly influences what data an app can collect and also how that data can be used. Um, in conjunction with the API is a set of rules that Apple and Google are putting out for app developers. And if they do not follow these rules, particularly as it regards to the collection of data and the protection of privacy, well, then those apps will be kicked out of each of the company's stores and removed from their phones. So app developers, if they want to be deployed and, and, and be successful, have to play by the rules that are being set by Apple and Google. And so that then begs the question, okay, well, what are some of these rules and what do we think about them? Well, they're pretty good. So for example, um, all of this is voluntary. It is not being mandated. So Apple and Google are not going to force these apps onto your phone and neither local, state, or federal government is going to be forcing the adoption of these apps. Uh, it's also voluntary in the sense of you not only have to volunteer to download the app, but you have to volunteer to share your COVID-19 diagnosis with the app. And even beyond that, you uh, will have to volunteer to have that diagnosis shared with other people. Um, but let's say you do it and for uh, a little while it's fine, but then you realize, eh, this is a little creepy, I don't want to do this anymore. Well, that's fine too, because all you have to do is withdraw from the program. And after that point, your data is no longer being shared with, uh, with the app developers or anyone else. And so the entire program is voluntary and that's really, really important. Some of the other rules mean uh, that only the minimum amount of data can be collected by apps that are necessary for COVID-19 contact tracing. That means that local, you know, like your, your geopol, uh, your GPS information, your, your location information is not going to be collected. 
Um, your internet viewing habits is not going to be collecting. Your, your contacts are not going to be connected. And a whole host of other crit critical information and private information is not going to be collected by the API or by the digital contact tracing apps. Um, the data that is collected is collected and anonymized so that it's not identified with you as an individual by name, but is simply uh, a, a generalized set of data that can be used for tracking um, the, the COVID-19 spread. It's also going to be encrypted both at rest and in transit. It's also not allowed to be shared with law enforcement or uh, intelligence departments and agencies. Um, the companies themselves, Apple, Google, and the app developers are prohibited from using any of the collected data for commercial purposes. They can't use it for advertising. They can't have advertising on their apps. They can't license the information, sell the information, use it for uh, application or service development or any other kind of commercial enterprise. All of that is prohibited according to the rules. Um, so there's a, a whole host of, of reasons uh, to begin to be cautiously optimistic about how this is going to be rolled out. And as we've dug into the details, we are cautiously optimistic. We think that Apple and Google are prioritizing privacy while also trying to meet a very real uh, public need. And specifically, one of the challenges with COVID-19 is that it spreads so quickly. And so up until this point, it has outstripped our capacity to do manual contact tracing at the speed of transmission, which means it's really hard to kind of keep an awareness of what's going on and ultimately to get the nation back up and running again. So if we can figure out a way to do this digital contact tracing in a way that facilitates the needs of public health officials, that protects the individual user's privacy, and makes us all more likely to kind of get back to work uh, while remaining healthy, well, then we think that type of initiative is a good initiative that needs to be explored further. That being said, there are still a ton of questions that are unanswered and a lot of details that are going to emerge going forward. And you have our commitment at Heritage that we're going to stay on top of this, that we're paying attention, that we're going uh, into the details of all this, and that we're going to give you the uh, unvarnished assessment of what we think is uh, good public policy uh, and also just a conservative perspective on these developments. Uh, later this week, I'm actually going to be going on the Daily Signal podcast. And if you would like to hear more of the details about what's going on and some of the developments along these lines, I encourage you to you know, swipe up or click subscribe or whatever you need to do to, to hear that podcast. But one thing that would also be uh, very helpful to us is if you could send us your questions. So, for example, in this brief discussion, what question did I not address? Um, do you even believe the answers that are being given to you right now? Uh, what is the likelihood that you would be willing to participate in this digital contact tracing? And any other associated questions that may come to mind as you think about uh, not just the COVID-19 context, but technology policy in general. Uh, we recognize that this is a, um, a section of, of public policy and, and, and of our kind of shared life together that really matters, that has huge implications, and uh, we want to hear from you and know more about how you're thinking about those things so that we can provide better insights and um, greater help. Thanks for letting me drop into your day. Uh, thanks for letting me share a little bit of information. And we look forward to hearing from you soon.